Custom corner deck shelf. That's what I'm fixing to make right here. And I'll get you in on here on the, how I laid this out. I don't normally draw plans, I just build stuff. But in this particular case, I do a little bit of careful layout because I need to work around post. And as you saw at the picture at the very beginning, it kind of wraps around that post. Of course, I haven't made it yet, so hopefully this turns out well. So, what am I making this out of? I'm not using treated wood, I'm using fur. And by fur, I mean Douglas fur, not like mink or possum or something. Um, went to a lumber store, actually was at Menards, and bought an 8 foot, 2 by 10, Douglas fur. It's still dried. And I went down through the pile and I actually found an 8 foot, 2 by 10 that only had two tiny knots in it. That's almost unheard of to find something like that. So that's going to be perfect for this shelf because I, I didn't want any knots in the surface where I was going to be. A lot of times after you cut your wood into inch and a half squares, you can rotate it to hide knots or whatever, but it's lucky to find something almost clear. Only a couple little tiny knots and they're going to be in the cutoff area. So what I'm going to do next here, I've got my wood laid out. I'm going to show you how I laid it out, then I'm going to move it and I'm going to show you how I did the layout on a piece of cardboard. So the pieces I'm going to use, and these are just sitting here, they're not glued together, and they're just sitting here on the table. I laid out kind of how I wanted them and then I drew a line down through the center. Those will be my alignment marks when I glue this together. And then I numbered each piece down here on the end so I know which one goes where. And yes, there's a lot of waste on the ends here, but these were the pieces I had. I mean, I, I just cut that uh, two by eight and a half, or two, I should say two by ten and a half, then ripped it into inch and a half uh, squares. As course, these here have been trimmed down, but Oh, them little blocks would be good for something somewhere. So what the idea of this is to wrap around the corner post and then hang over each side on two by two inches. So I'm going to move the wood and I'll show you how I did the layout. Okay, this black square right here represents the three and a half inch square corner post on the deck. And then there's a two by six that wraps each side and it, it's joined like this. So what I want my shelf to do is to recess over this four by four, halfway, and then extend over those uh, two by sixes by two inches each direction with a total shelf depth of 12 inches. So what you see the, in these blue lines here are represent the outside edges of that shelf and each one of these green lines represents one of the uh, two by twos or what I, they're actually inch and a half square. So what I need to do next is glue all these together let them dry and then we'll run them through the planer and then we'll cut them and then I'll put a chamfer on it, we'll finish it, but we'll get into all that. But I just wanted to show you how I did this layout in case you want to do something similar. Okay, for the glue up I'm using Tight Bond 3, it's waterproof, and I am using a roller applicator and these are not expensive. I think this may have come from Rockler or some place like that and I've used it quite a bit in the past. Uh, you put your glue in the bottle and there's a hole in the top here and as you squeeze it out it spreads across this roller and you can get very, very quick application of your glue. And just make sure you clean it out when you're done. Don't wait till like the next day or something, you're going to have a hard time. If you should let the glue dry on this roller up here, if you can get the corner started after it dries, you can peel it off the roller. But getting it out of this bottle if you let it dry in there is going to be about impossible. So just something to keep in mind, make sure you clean it out right away. So I got a line up uh, a tarp, put over my saw table so I don't get glue everywhere. And I need to get my glue bottle loaded, I need to get a bunch of clamps rounded up. These uh, cheap blue tarps you get for, I don't know, sometimes you get it for 99 cents at Harbor Freight. Uh, they're like 6 by 8 They're really nice because glue doesn't stick to them and anything that does stick to them, if you take it outside and shake it, it will, uh, the glue will come off. So it's, they're nice to use for that. So I've got my uh, bottle loaded up here with some tight bond 3. Now I just need to uh, 
start to applying glue and putting these pieces together. And some people don't glue both sides, I do. Makes for a lot of squeeze out, but you don't want any uh, dry spots in there either. I'll just get my marks somewhat aligned there. Okay, got her clamped. I just need to wipe off the excess glue there as much as possible and let her dry. Then I can run it through the planer. Now I got a couple of little bitty irregularities there. I'm not using calls on this because I don't have any cupping or anything like that. Every, this is small. If I, if I was going to go 24 inches wide, I'd probably put calls on it to uh, keep all the pieces together. But otherwise, uh, everything's looking good here. Just need to let it dry. Okay, it's tomorrow. Well, actually, it's today, which was not yesterday. But yesterday is when I did the glue up. I let it dry overnight. I've got the clamps off. Got it sitting up here on my planer. I'm going to run this through the planer a couple times on each side to get everything all trued up. Okay, now that I got everything trued up, I just need to get my uh, template over there and make a few cuts on it. And I'll lay that on here. I'll trace it, get this cut out. I got one little spot here I noticed where the board warped off, but I do believe that's in a cutoff area, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. Otherwise, everything looks good here. So here's my template. I just cut the cardboard out. I didn't cut this edge real neat because it's, I just wanted the cardboard to be smaller. Before I uh, plane this, I made some marks on the ends here so I knew where my center lines would be. So now it's just a matter of lining those up, getting everything up here flush, and tracing my lines. I see a little bit of this. I'm going to have to fill a little bit of that, it looks like, because I didn't quite get as tight as I like it to be. So oh, here's that little spot there I'm going to have to do a little filling on. It didn't quite get as tight. I don't know what was up there. but uh, So there's my cuts I need to make. So I'll get those cut off. I did a couple of test passes first, uh, just on a scrap. Uh, I had it a little bit too high on my first test pass. I don't want to leave that little lip there. It's kind of decorative, but I, I could see that chipping or just becoming a nuisance. So I want it just perfectly round like this here. So 
So that's what I'm going to do. And of course you always want to do your end grain first. In case you have any tear out it won't affect your uh, finish on the long side. And yes I should have my dust collector hooked up but it's clear over yonder so I'll just clean up the mess when I'm done. edges, all that kind of good stuff. I'll probably round these little sharp edges down here a little bit. I'll do that with a sander, even that out. So next step would be to do some finished sanding. And I got to fill my little crack there. I did notice on the back though that it's good and tight, but I got a stupid knot on that side. So this has got to be the bottom. But once that's filled and this is stained, you'll never see that. Okay, sanding, I'm starting out with 100 grit on here and then I'll move my way on up until I get to uh, 220. Okay, the sanding operation is complete. Everybody loves to sand, right? Yeah. But it's all sanded down to 220. Going over with a tack cloth. So, you need to decide what color to stain this. Uh, this red oak stain right here accentuates the green the best, but because it's, it's that dark, I'm afraid it would get a little bit too hot in the sun. Uh, this one over here is called Puritan Pine. It doesn't really accent the grain too much. It just kind of, it's almost the same color as if I just put the spar varnish on the wood. So I'm leaning towards the early American down here. It uh, is not really dark, but it still accentuates the grain. And you'll be able to see that grain pattern a little better. So maybe I need to go ask the boss. Okay, so after consulting with the boss, and she's the one that's going to be using that shelf in her corner of the deck up there, she picked this one as well, so that's the one I'm going to go with. And this will be stained on both sides, even though you won't see the bottom. It'll also be finished on both sides and around these edges to absolutely seal everything. This is, uh, it's a somewhat durable wood, it's, it's fur, but it's not like a pressure treated wood where you don't really have to worry about it and just let it go and if it gets wet so what but uh, we want to keep this dry on the inside and water run off on the outside hence the use of using marine varnish now I need to get this thing stained this was a big project I'd use a staining pad uh, you could use a part of an old uh, t-shirt but actually these blue shop towels on small projects like this these are excellent and when I have this setting on, these are called bench cookies, and as you can see, they've been used for a lot of different things. Uh, they come from Rockler. And I'm doing the bottom first, and then when I flip it over, if the bench cookies leave a little mark on the bottom, not a big deal. So uh, if you've never used uh, penetrating stain like this before, you put it on heavy, you let it soak in for a while, then you take another rag and you wipe off the excess. So let's get a little jag of it here. And I'm going to hit my edges here as well. Don't skimp on the stain when you're doing this. You'll end up with uh, light spots. Get it under good and heavy. So you can wipe off the excess uh, afterwards. Get my edges here good. Hey, once you have everything coated, you just let it set for a few minutes, then wipe off the excess. Okay, it's been about five minutes. I don't, the longer you let it set, the darker it'll be. Uh, I don't want this to end up being too dark, so now I just take a, another shop towel here and wipe off the excess. And now we need to flip this over and do the other side. If you want uh, a darker color and it didn't come out as dark as you'd like, uh, after it dries for a couple hours, you can put another coat on, it'll darken it up. 
little hint. At least that's with uh, penetrating stain. This is not water-based. This is a low base penetrating stain. Okay, again, I'll need to let this dry for at least 24 hours to make sure everything is penetrated and dry and all that kind of good stuff. So the coating I'm going to be using is this here. It's Helmsman Spar Urethane. It's a marine varnish, and I'm using gloss. And there'll be several coats of it with some sanding in between, and we'll get into that. I was hoping to have this done uh, to put it in this weekend, but this is Wednesday, and it's got to dry till Thursday, and then the coats, and then we leave for Friday. I don't think we're going to make it this week. May end up waiting a week to, so I can get the best possible finish on it, because I want to do several coats, and you have to let the coats dry in between with a little bit of sanding. So, see you tomorrow. Hey, it's tomorrow. Actually, it's today, and not yesterday, and you know how that goes. So I've got a. Uh, actually, this is my second coat of this uh, marine spar varnish on my corner shelf here. I came out late last night and used uh, tack cloth, of course, first, and then did a first coat on it, come out this morning, and it was all nice and dry. You're supposed to wait at least four hours. I like to wait more than that. Our humidity right now this is extremely high. We're at uh, 81 degrees, which isn't all that warm, really hot for this time of year, but it's 82% humidity. And that it makes it hard for varnish to dry like that. So we've got a fan on the back here. Uh, I will do one more light sanding on this. It probably is a 400 grit tack cloth again. Do a final coat. I'll take it up to camp and I uh, will install it on the deck. And you'll see some pictures of what that looks like after it's on there. So different kind of little project here. You can make this any size you want, of course. And uh, granddaughter has seen this and she's kind of wanting one for her deck up at camp too but a little bit bigger to set a little cooktop on so do some measuring for that i think it's going to be a popular item not that hard to build inexpensive so if you got anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up always helps the channel roger in the shop thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one